No, Sarah, there's no history or geography books. No, we do. Top it now. Do you see the big purple books? Mm -hmm. We do, um, it's like a skills based curriculum. So, what we do is every, like this one, will you make the right choice? It's like a question. So every half term we have a different topic and sometimes it will be um, a geography based topic, sometimes it will be a history based topic. So what will happen next term is we're doing how will we sustain our planet. So what happens then is that's obviously a geography based one so we'll do all about you know earth and space and everything like that. And how do we work out what the right choice is? Do, do you have one preset or do they...? Well no, it's we're giving guidance on you know the dangers of smoking, the dangers of alcohol whether they're going to go into high school and make the right decisions about things. You know, so it's just getting them thinking. So they're not actually doing history or geography now? Not at the moment, no, but after half term we'll be doing a geography based topic, which is how we sustain our planet. So we're definitely dealing with a completely different education today than what we had 10, 15 years ago. It's not set Has it been that just... way where they don't get history, geography all the way through this school? No, there is a history and geography curriculum. The way that it's delivered is blocked here. So they are getting history and geography, but rather than a geography lesson each week, we deliver it as a topic. The thing is, when I, when I was at school, I knew the world map before I'd gone into the juniors. If I open a world map to my two boys, I'm not so bad with Charlie, but more with Elias, he hasn't got a clue where any country is. And I and, and I wasn't aware that they wasn't they weren't actually doing geography or they history. Are doing but geography and history. Then what what's the issue in relation to him looking at a map as though he's not seen it before? Well, I do that, find that rather so strange. We've used atlases in year five because we've used them when it, cause he's just come to year six. So they've used atlases in year five. They use atlases in every year group for different purposes. But it's not actually a core subject anymore. It's never been a core subject. It was when I was. It's a foundation school. subject under the national curriculum. Your core subjects are your literacy. And your yes, I know it's, I, it is the curriculum that I'm uh, <coughs> trying to understand. Because I've noticed a massive difference in the education my two daughters had here uh, and the one that my two sons have had. It's, the gap is huge in comprehension and I would say in literacy, math. And absolutely in, in, in the realms of history and geography. Right. I don't do, you want to, do you want to explain to Mr Young where the Elias is at at the moment in terms of progressing? Yeah, the, I mean, do, yeah, if I tell you where Elias is now, like academics, so I say there's, there's five minute slots really, so if we get, you know. At the minute, um, with his literacy, he's, he's sort of working at a very high level three. So we should be getting a good solid level four for when he leaves at the end of this year when he goes to high school, which is brilliant. That's what we want from him. With his maths, he's absolutely fantastic because his maths is working at a very high level and I've had the confidence it'll get a level He's five. doing better than me because I can't understand these algorithms that I've just looked at in those books. They seem to be, instead of, there, there, there it is. I think you're doing very well to keep the concentration in order to get a result or an end uh, sum, if you will. I can't understand those algorithms. It seems to be a lot longer to get to the basic equation, which I find is rather strange. So I think you're doing very well if he's at that level. Well, well he, he is, doing he is well. at that level. Yeah, good. he's doing well. That's good. And he loves and his maths. And he's on track, isn't he? He does yeah, like maths, yes. He's on track, yeah. and he loves his maths. And, um, He's, he's on a table where, if they're working as a group, he'll take a lead. He loves solving problems. You know, when when they've got to find a strategy, where they're going in blind, basically, they find a strategy and he sorts it all out. And he's really good at that. That's and good. He does like his maths. He loves his literacy as well, um, but he does struggle with his literacy a, a little bit more. But like I said, he's, he's definitely on track for getting a level four, which is what we want, and a level five for his maths, because that is his strongest subject. Great. Now, the books that I've just seen, are they the only books that... Uh, yeah, they're all out there. So that's, they're, that's they're, they're it. They're all that we're, we work in this year, yeah. So we're always in the term in October. So yeah, we're only early in the term, really, always. So. Yeah. And you're assuring me that they will get some geography and history, because I don't yeah, see any signs Yeah, it's on the board out there, ready for the next display, how will we sustain our planet. That's our next topic, after half term. Mm -hmm. But as well, can I just say that Elias is one of the most polite boys I've ever taught. 
it can be, you know, when I'm walking down the corridor or whatever, if an adult or anybody's coming through the door, he opens that door and he lets you through and he always says good morning and he's an absolute credit to you because he's so polite and lovely. And well, as you, go, as you know, it's what you put in yeah. between one and seven. He's all, That's and as what well, carries. when he came in this year he as well, he said to me, he said, I'm really going to knuckle down this year, miss, he said, because it's year six and I really don't want to get in trouble with things anymore and things like that. And I thought, yeah, and he's, and he's really, really works hard in class and he always wants to please. Yeah, no, no, no. that's the only issue I'm not happy with. It's too much pleasing. Now then, there's, there's a little gizmo you use in these days. What, what do you call it? Active no, That's the one. Who determines the choices? They do. Well, who, who programs the choices that they can choose from? What into the? Well, don't you don't you don't they have a, a series of choices in relation yeah, to like a particular choice question? Who puts who's putting the the, the answer the, the choices in? That they can choose from teachers. You that'll be you. Well, sometimes it can be me, or it might be another year five or six teacher. Because they plan together. But you, you're dealing directly with emotions. Is that data being collected and then oh, passed I to the government? I, I don't do it for the emotions one. I don't use the emotions one. You know, when what, when they come in in the morning. And but for instance, is the data? Well, I know yeah, it's being kept. Really. Yeah, it's being passed on, isn't it? Where is it being passed to? What do you mean? I don't use it. Is it connected emotions. to the internet realm, these no. devices? They're not. No, it's all kept on. So if I wanted to see if they've answered some multiple choice questions on the active or up, I can then look at the results and it's only available to me. Right. And, and no, nobody else. And so is it deleted at the end of each session or...? On... On, those, on the active, whatever you call it. Yeah, I can like, view the results, but I don't view them on the whiteboard. I view them myself afterwards when the class is gone. So it connects to the whiteboard, does it? It's, the, on, the, it's the, on the whiteboard. I see. Right. All oh, right, I see. Yeah, we're just trying to, we've, we've just found out about this gizmo, and we're trying to find out as much information as we can. Um, so it's all connected to the whiteboard, is it? So the whole class gets to see everybody else's choice. No. They don't. No, no, I do afterwards. You do? All uh, so oh right. I can assess. So you assess it and obviously you... Yeah, so if So I you're documenting this information? No. You must be writing no, it down somewhere. I don't write it down anywhere. Well, how do you, well what's, what's the aim of it and how do you sort of benefit from it? And more to the point, how do the children so benefit? I can see instantly who hasn't understood those and then I can target my learning differently and towards that particular child. If that child hasn't understood those questions and got a lot wrong, then I know that I then have to do some extra work with that child or put some extra teacher input in there. And what, what subjects would you be using this? Uh, it varies. Maths. Mainly maths? Mainly maths, yeah. Is it? Yeah. You see, from the information we, we've got, it, it, there's a lot of it about mood. It seems to be mood. You mean you as a parent? Well, me as uh, what I do for a living. So we're finding that a lot of these are, are trying to get from the children their state, their emotional state. Um, are you suggesting you don't use that? I am for emotional. So you're saying you use it strictly for uh, education. education? And these results are not logged anywhere? No. You're assuring me of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, so I'm just wanting to... Uh, so there's so many changes going on in education at the moment, we, it's hard to keep up, especially mm -hmm. given the secrecy that's surrounding the whole education system at the moment, mm -hmm. from the parents in particular. Mm. Which brings me to this, I have this for you, Miss Williams. That's the final opportunity you have before we go to court. Okay. Right, well, I think the five minutes is probably up by now. Yeah. Because this was about talking Elias. about Elias and his progress. So, you know, as far as we're concerned, we've, we've completed the interview at this point. And those are the only books that yeah. he has, no other subject matter. Thank you very much.